Hello, my name is Jim Kibler of Kibler's Long Rifles, and this video, video is a continuation of the series on building our Colonial Rifle Kit, a Kibler's Long Rifles Colonial Rifle Kit. Uh, the gun is well underway. Um, mostly all, all assembled. We have to uh, do a little work, bit, work, bit of work on the barrel, and then uh, it'll be all assembled and ready to sand and polish up and, and finish. So we're going to go ahead and get after the barrel right now. Start with the, installing the, the sights. So here's the rear sight as it'll be received. There's a little nub, a tiny little nub of the gate that's still left on it. So we're going to file that off. It needs to be flush. So I'll just take a file and get after that. Okay. So the idea here is when you're filing something like that is you want to hit the nub but not all the rest of the area. You can just graze the rest of the area, but you don't you want to keep it flat. That sight looks good. Now we'll get the barrel. Let's see about installing it. So the dovetails are pre-cut. They are slightly undersized though, just slightly. So this is actually starting to go in. So before I file, I'm gonna give it a little tap and just see if it'll go in. Just a little piece of aluminum, a dowel, a brass rod, uh, a chunk of wood will probably be fine. Now this is going in just fine as is. Sometimes they require a little filing. This one doesn't. So, so it's good to go. Easy as that. Now on the front sight, it's going to need, it generally is a little tighter. So I'll show you how to adjust the size to fit. So we're going to move on to the front sight now. Okay, so I'm going to take the front sight. I'm going to make sure there's no burrs on it. Sometimes there's some burrs on it. Burrs on the base in particular. I'm going to take a three-cornered file. So a three-cornered file is a triangular-shaped file. This particular one just has teeth on one side, and it works really good for adjusting these dovetails. You can take a standard file, a standard three-corner file, and you can grind teeth off of one side on a bench grinder or a, a, a belt sander and turn it into a file like this. You can also get by with a three-cornered file if you're careful without the teeth ground off. So. I'm going to clean up this casting a little bit. Run, make sure the no burrs and crap on there. There we go. It's off the angle there a minute ago. Okay. So I, I like to put a little bit of a lead on the sights when they start. So by lead, it's just a tiny little bit of a draft at the front and I'm trying trying to fit it right now and it's starting to go in but it's just a little tight I can just tell so I'm gonna file it a little bit put a safe edge down so but safe edge no teeth down facing downward and I'm gonna open up the size of this a little bit and we'll put it in and just kind of feel it you that's still just a little tight I can tell so you want these to go in, but you, know, you shouldn't have to beat them in there too hard. Okay, let's try that. So we'll get a dowel. This may be a little snug. We may have to adjust it again, but we'll try it like this. It's actually going in there pretty good. Okay. So that's in place. Now, the base is extra wide, so it's a little long, so it won't hurt to trim it off. I like it to protrude a little bit past the edge of the barrel. 
so you can adjust the position of it a little bit, but not this far. So we will trim these off. Um, I'll go ahead and do that right now. Make sure my lines are good, which I think they're okay. Tap this back out. You can cut this off with a fine tooth hacksaw blade, a jeweler's saw, various ways. I like to just use side cutters and I'm gonna go outside my line a little bit and squeeze pretty hard and I can snap it off. Okay, now it needs to be dressed up a little bit. Again, this is a spot where it's, it's best to put, put the workpiece in the vise. I'd probably get away with it, but it's, it's much easier to control filing when you clamp something up properly. Oops. Okay. Square it up and kind of round this edge a little bit. See, my eyes are not what they used to be. Okay, I guess that looks okay, hopefully. We can touch it up when it gets on the gun, too. Okay, so there, it's trimmed down. Hopefully it'll be okay. Put it back in. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I will take a file and kind of just adjust it a little bit. enough for now it needs to be polished up but it's installed so that's done let's go on to the touch hole liner what a touch hole is is it's a it's a, a bushing more or less that's installed in the side of the barrel and that's where the the flash or the powder your pan powder explodes and that flame goes through the side of the barrel through the, the touch hole this barrel is drilled and tapped for a touch hole liner. So it's an oversized hole that's threaded right now. And there's a, a liner that threads into that hole. The purpose of the liner is twofold. Um, well, more or less just uh, one purpose is that it's counterboard on the inside. So there's a cone on the inside of the liner where uh, powder that you've dumped down the barrel will fill. So in effect, your charge is much closer to the outside of the, the barrel with using a liner. Um, also, a liner makes the, the flash hole shorter and that shortness in the flash hole helps it, the, the rifle stay clean. Um, so these help speed somewhat um, just due to the, the shape and the powder being closer to the outside of the barrel. But one of the huge improvements is that they stay stay cleaner. The flash hole stays cleaner um, since it's uh, much, much shorter. So those are the, the big reasons why a, a liner is a good thing. So in order to install the liner, it threads in. Okay, so we're gonna do that. This one threads in pretty nice. You may need to use a pair of vice grips to, to thread it in. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put vice grips on it right now, clamp them up pretty tight. Okay, and we're gonna keep turning. Now it won't hurt to put a little reference mark on here so you can see when it stops turning. Let's find a marker. A little, little Sharpie marker on here. Now I'm gonna keep turning. 
and, and pull pretty hard. I'm, there's a sort of the fear that you may strip out the plug but, or strip out the liner, but it's highly unlikely. And you have to pull these pretty tight for them to seat in the, the countersink. So there's a countersink at the top of that threaded hole and a corresponding head on the liner. So you need to pull this pretty tight, which that's about as tight as it's gonna go. And then remove your, your vice grips. So now we need to cut it off. In order to cut it off, we get a hacksaw. Probably a little finer hacksaw than this would be best, but this will do. So there's a slot, a little groove in the liner. So you can stick it in there. And I'm, I'm putting pressure to, to cut away from the surface of the barrel. So I'm kind of trying to angle away from the barrel because you don't want the, the hacksaw to, to cut into the side of the barrel. That's a bad thing. And there it goes. <laughs> so it's cut off. Now I'm gonna take a file, and I like to start with a pretty coarse file. This little pillar file works good. So, a little small file, and it's pretty coarse. So, you want a file, the whole idea behind this is you want this to be filed flush with the, the barrel, but not gouge up the side of the barrel while you're filing the, what remains above the surface down. So, we're gonna just take this pillar file and focus right on the liner itself. I'm gonna cross file. Okay, so we're getting it down. Now as an insurance policy, I'm gonna take a ball peen hammer and peen around the end, edge, to make sure that that liner fills up that counter bore. Okay, now we're gonna go back to the pillar file. File that down. Now this liner, this liner is actually made of carbon steel, same as the barrel steel. But most of them are stainless steel. And most of them that we sell are stainless steel. The stainless file is a little harder than the carbon steel. So this is going pretty well, pretty easy. The advantage of the stainless steel is that it the flash hole stays to size longer. So it's resistant to erosion and burnout. The advantage of the carbon steel liner is that when you color the barrel, when you finish the barrel, it'll color the same as the rest of your barrel and you won't see the presence of the liner. So this is filing down very nicely. So I'm gonna bring it down, just focusing on the top of the liner. I'm not hitting, you can see I've not hit anywhere hardly on the rest of the barrel flat, which you don't want to. You want to be careful. You want to just hit on the liner itself. Now eventually I'm going to skid across the barrel because it's going to be down so far that there's no other way to, that it can happen. Okay, so I'm starting to hit the barrel just a little bit. So you can see I've hit it just a, just a bit. Now it's time to go to a mill file. And usually, if you're careful, then you can just draw file it. Draw filing is holding the, the file perpendicular to the, the axis of the barrel. So I'm gonna draw file it. This barrel has a, has a nick right beside the liner, and that was in there, some kind of a chip impression or something. So it may have to stay, that little nick. But we'll see, it may file out somewhat too. Okay. So that's all there is to it. So you can see the liner is pretty much invisible now. Um, there is a little nick, like I said, from a, a little dent that was previously in the barrel, but that's not a big deal. So now I'm going to go with the 16th inch bit 
and drill this out to 16th. They come a little smaller than 16th, but 16th is a good size to start with. So, so that's all it is to installing the touch hole liner. The underlugs are tenons or little metal protrusions that are inserted into the bottom of the barrel that extend into the stock and are little tabs basically for pins to go through. I'll show you what they look like here. The barrel takes four of them. That's what they look like. So the barrel is pre-dovetailed. Now the dovetails are a little undersized, so we do need to file them a little bit. Probably at some point I'll adjust things to make this um, fit a little closer. So you have a little less filing to do, but they're, they're pretty close as is and it's not too big of a deal. So I'll demonstrate the process of installing one and then uh, won't bore you with the other three since it's the exact same process. And uh, then we'll come back and start working on something else. So first step is to take the, the underlug and make sure there aren't any burrs and make sure you file a little lead. And by lead, it's just a little angle at the, at the portion that's gonna go in the dovetail first. That helps it slip in. Then you can hold it on here and you can kind of see how big it is, how much material needs removed. So there's not a lot. There's maybe five ten thousandths, maybe ten thousandths, I don't know, somewhere in that range. So I'm gonna use, again, my three-quarter file with a safe edge and open this up a little bit. Go a little bit and then I'll try it. See how it seems. Okay, that's starting to go in, but I think it's probably gonna be a little tiny bit tight, so I'm gonna go just a little more. Okay, I could probably tap it in, but you don't want them to be super, super tight. You want them to go in without a huge amount of force but they need to be in there well enough they don't fall out. Okay, that's probably gonna be pretty good, but, but we'll see. A little piece of aluminum, a little piece of wood, a uh, little piece of brass or a brass dowel, or excuse me, brass rod will work too. So I'm gonna try to tap it in. So it's going in, it's going in pretty nice. Now I wouldn't want it any tighter than this one. This is going okay though. So we're going to leave it as it is. Tap it in to center it up. Okay, make sure it's down. And that's it. Now, let's say that, uh, that you, when you were fitting this, it, you filed a little too much and it ended up being loose. There's an easy fix that is, this works great and there's no problem with it at all is you can take a little piece of metal or a chisel that's more or less flattened off, blunted off, and you can put it right along the edge of the, the, the dovetail and you can tap it. And that'll clinch down the metal and tighten up your, your underlugs. If you go a little too far, don't worry, it's okay. So you can see how I ground this particular chisel just for that, because it happens sometimes. After, after the, uh, the underlug's installed, it needs to be filed flush with the barrel on the sides. So I'm gonna use a mill file, just an eight inch mill file, I'm gonna file it flush. Again, make sure it's more or less centered. I don't measure anything, but you can kind of look at it and see it's, it's pretty good, I guess. So I'm gonna file it flush. And it needs to be perfectly flush. It can't be high. Okay, so you can see we're hitting all across the barrel, so that side's done. I'm going to flip it in the vise just to make it a little easier. There. 
Okay. Now it's flush, so it's installed. So we'll do the other three in the same manner and the work on the barrel, the actual construction that needs done in the barrel will be wrapped up. So I'll bring you back after we do the three remaining underlug. Okay, so now it's time to put it back in the stock, see how it looks, and then we can drill through the underlugs or tenons. Put it in place. Okay, kind of squeeze it. Let's get started. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You can see how the that one may be up a tiny bit, but it doesn't look too bad. And all the rest seem to be pretty good. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure the barrel's back against the breech. Install the tang bolt. Okay, next we're going to Squeeze the stock and the barrel together. Pick a drill bit, which is, needs to be a, either a 16th or the wire gauge that's just next size bigger than a 16th. So the, the key with this is you don't want to wallow out these holes in the wood. So you have to be kind of careful with how you hold the drill. You don't want to push it aside. You want it to be in line with the, the uh, previously drilled hole that's already present in the stock. So I like to sometimes, it just depends, but sometimes run it backwards just to kind of get an idea. And I'm going to move it forward and hopefully drill through without pulling out a bunch of wood. Okay, so that one did pretty good. And then you notice I didn't go clear through the stock, which I stopped it purposefully Otherwise, that pin fit can be even a little more troublesome. So I'm gonna squeeze the barrel into the stock again right here. And we're gonna go about it the same way. Stick it in there and try to get this thing lined up. So I'm spinning backwards, seems pretty good. Too bad. Okay, and then the final one. Muzzle. And this you have to be a little more careful with. I can just squeeze it a little more gently since I'm actually squeezing on that front sight. But it should be okay. Okay, that's that. So, we could just take a pin, file a lead on it, okay, find my hammer, we could install it. Okay, and be done with it. But we're gonna go one more step to make this gun a little better shooter. We're gonna slot the underlugs a little bit. 
to allow for expansion and contraction of the wood and movement of the barrel with it heating up or being hotter or colder, etc. So, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the barrel out. Side. Now, I'll demonstrate slotting the underlugs on one particular underlug. So you can see just a pinhole right here. We'll do the back one. It doesn't need slotted as much because most of the movement is the further out the barrel that you go, the more movement there's going to be. But um, I always like to slot them all a little bit. So we'll just demonstrate on this rear under look. So we use a jeweler saw to accomplish it. Now this is one thing that I'm thinking about, including on the kit is machining the kit such that it already have these slots in it. Or machining the under lugs such that they'll already have a slot in it. And I may do that. There's some things to consider, but I'd like to move in that direction. So I fed the jeweler saw blade through the hole. And now I'm just going to cut a little to elongate the slot just a little bit. Whoops. So I've cut on each side. Now I'm going to move, whoops, move up and down and turn at the same time. Come on. It can be a little fussy, but and you break blades sometimes, but that's okay. Okay, I need to move this a little bit this way. Now I'm gonna slot it in the other direction a little bit. Okay, now. Now I'm gonna turn, come on move up and down and turn at the same time without breaking the blade here. So it's giving me a little trouble. Okay, now we've got it. Remove the blade. Now I need to find a little file here. I'm gonna have to step aside and find a little needle file because I don't have it out on the bench here. Okay, I'm back with you. So this is just a little flat needle file, relatively coarse teeth. So I can go down in here and I can just smooth up those, those saw cut edges to align with that hole that we've drilled. And then after we think we get it, we'll test it with a pin to see if it'll slide. We'll do this, follow the same procedure on the three other underlugs. And it's getting pretty close. Okay, so I'm gonna take a piece of pin stock now. Surely there's one around here somewhere. That'll be okay. Again, make sure there's no burrs on it. We'll slip it in here and we'll see if it'll, and it slides back and forth. It's a tiny bit more though, it's kind of snagging. So we'll give it a little bit more room to breathe here. And we'll try again. There it goes, back and forth fine. So you can see the slot that we ended up with. Do the same with this one, this one, and this one. And then uh, I'll bring you back after we've completed that and uh, show you the next step. So I've slotted the other three underlugs, installed the barrel. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's, always make sure that it's seated against the edge. So 
find my hang screw, install it, go ahead and start putting this gun together because we're basically completely stuck completely assembled. Still need sanding and and uh, wood finishing and metal finishing, but it's basically together. So I'm going to install the lock again. And we'll probably wrap up with showing you how to cut off the pins and to size and that'll be about it. Good and tight, the screws. I like to tap it. Make sure it's in there. Our fit looks good between our pan and our barrel, so that's nice. So now we'll just talk for just a moment on the pins. So in order to, to finish off the gun, Take a pin, and my hammer here in the mess, here's one, tap it until it's basically just, just flush with the, the far side. That pretty much is flush, a tiny bit sticking up, but we don't, I'll trim it so that we don't have any sticking up here at the end. So flush with the other side more or less, and we need to mark the, we need to mark the Pin. I like to use just a three-cornered file with a safe edge. There are different ways of doing it, but they're on the safe side against the stock. And you can take vice grips, pull it out. Excuse me about the dog. Our dog is old and senile. So I'm going to trim it off just a little inside because I want it to be a little, little shorter than the width of the stock. So I'm gonna go in just inside my mark. And then file. Flatten it off and then round it off good. And like I said, you can take these pins and chuck it up in the drill and spin it and round it off real nice and smooth. But that's, this is good enough. Okay. Then I've got a pin punch somewhere. Put back or not. Yeah, here's another one. So we'll use a pin punch and just seat it. Ideally, these should just be a tiny bit below the surface. Or there we go. So we would follow that same procedure with all these pins. Pins that hold on the guard. Pins that hold on the all the ramrod pipes and all the pins for the that hold the barrel into the stock. So we can put in our ramrod. And then off camera here, I'll go ahead and cut those pins off. And uh, basically we have an assembled rifle. So pretty much the amount of time that you saw on camera, we were able to put a very, very fine quality rifle together. As fine as any custom custom rifle in terms of quality. So um, that concludes this series on constructing the rifle. We will pick back up and we'll talk about draw filing the barrel, sanding the stock, and uh, we'll probably even go, in, go into staining and metal treatment and perhaps even some carving. Um, but this summarizes the, the construction of our Colonial Rifle Kit. Thank you.